Hey all and welcome back to our first ever podcast run by the no-code community in Serbia called Best God. Our mission here at Best God is to try to share as much of knowledge we can uh, kind of we've gained over the past six years with working with top enterprise clients on Webflow and kind of share that through different workshops, podcasts and in-person boot camps here at our focus hub in East Serbia. And then kind of hopefully get a lot more people together uh, in Europe and everybody else uh, in one single community. So, as our, as our first guest, we have Christina from our team. She's our lead designer, and she's going to be telling us a little bit more about kind of what was her process in discovering Webflow, how Webflow helped her become a better designer, and why she maybe did not become an actual Webflow developer, but stay being a true designer after actually learning Webflow. So, Christina, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, Oros. So, as you mentioned, I'm here at Flow Ninja working as our lead designer, and um, I've been at Flow Ninja for two and a half years, designing websites that are built on Webflow and uh, learning a lot along the way on how to set up style guides and work with the team of designers. Yeah, so how was your journey uh, as a designer starting fresh from university? Kind of how did those kind of beginning steps look like? Well, definitely after I graduated, I didn't really have the idea of becoming a web designer. I used I am a graduate of graphic design, but after I graduated, um, when I came to Flow Ninja, I kind of was a bit overwhelmed with how should I now approach something that I used to do on for posters or print, and then how to translate all of it into actually something that's gonna be built on web and it will have actual users going through it, looking through it. But I was super excited for the new opportunity and I was super excited that there is a lot to learn. Yeah, how easy was it to you for you to learn actual technical knowledge and knowing kind of what's a good practice on the web in terms of kind of the technical side of the design, which we love at Flow Ninja. Kind of did you start learning a little bit of Webflow and then translating that into Figma or just kind of what, the, what was the process there? Well, first of all, it was really like, I didn't expect the difference between graphic design and web design to be so big. So I was like, first of all, like I was kind of um, no, already learned a bit of HTML and CSS at the university, but had no idea that uh, design is actually so much more starting from wireframing and prototyping and then setting everything up in Figma. So definitely uh, I thought the only way to learn how to actually design and then hand off to developers was to see at least a little bit of how the environment in which they worked in looks like. So I just opened a Webflow account and I was like, I'm just gonna look around and see where where can I explore more, where my design can go further than what's expected, what's I what something that I should introduce or what's something that I shouldn't introduce in actual pages. And definitely working in Webflow for like a day or two was the biggest learning experience. Transitioning from graphic to web design, that's something that I, I suggest everyone does. Yeah, so kind of like, did that reflect mostly maybe on the design systems and kind of the backend approach of every Figma file and kind of how did we maybe create flow starter looking at that on your side? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, <clears throat> starting now that I remember, uh, in my opinion, like when I was starting the design, I was like, okay, let's just a design system or a style guide is something like, let's just have this font and this color and then that was it. However, <laughs> while using Webflow, obviously, I was like, whoa, there's so much more to this. Obviously, we're going to set a style guide for heading sizes. Obviously, we are going to have some colors that are used all over the website. But then I kind of, uh, that's where I find out that design is actually a system of things. And it needs to be set up as such, like we did in Flowstarter, so that, for example, even in the naming of the classes, we can have something that is properly named in Figma and then properly named in Webflow. And then also, if there is a component, we don't just think about it as something that's a one-time use. We need to think of it as a system and components that are reused, especially for 
buttons and links and that's something that's all over the website and it's really important to have those items laid out properly and then of course the grid system and so much around responsive design is something that i learned through webflow and then setting up something in figma that can help developers only develop that once they are given the design that uses flowspot or any comprehensive style guide they don't need to think about what's the hover state they just need to do the developing yeah yeah i feel like kind of most of the designers get it wrong in terms of having maybe 50 different heading styles or maybe probably the something that gets overlooked the most is padding and margin just because we do have some set margins and paddings we're reusing and kind of you can override a heading with that but i feel like and i mean that was something like the designers don't th actually see uh, before going into webflow that you actually have to set, have global margins and paddings kind of how did you start using those things in the end yeah well exactly when we get a uh website that's maybe design, de designed by someone else we have a lot of time actually need a lot of time determining well, what's their global heading if it's not properly set up in figma especially for the margins and paddings um if we use a lot of different uh values for those we get a site that's basically not made out of a system it looks like it's a random setup and what helped us with flow starter is naming like we have an excel margin and how to scale it from the desktop to mobile across tablet and then of course what did help us a lot is once we set it up everyone can use it like if i need to transfer a project to another designer they would know okay these are the margins that we use and then if a developer needs to hand it off to another developer they don't don't have a hard time finding which class was already used they just know like okay this is our actual margin on desktop it scales down to this on mobile yeah and i think it helps them a lot with project transfer and naming that properly that we have a system that's like if i'm going on vacation i know that some someone is gonna know how to use what i've said yeah yeah, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, as you said, kind of like, let's say for a bigger site, if somebody else takes on a design uh, and we don't have those systems, like the page is slowly going to start going off brand and whatever, and going to become a lot harder at CSS yeah. wise to, to develop a web at the end. Okay, kind of, what were the biggest mistakes maybe you saw? Like, where, because sometimes we do work with other agencies that design websites. We're not bashing anybody mm -hmm. on that side, uh, but maybe what were the biggest mistakes you saw when having Figma from other, from other agencies comparing to kind of when somebody actually knows the technical root of the design? Yeah, we don't wanna, definitely don't want to bash anybody. And I completely understand if someone is just starting to do web design that things get overlooked. I mean, sometimes we don't have like a responsive design. It's not like a huge deal, but if you have a style guide that's set up to be responsive then it's not so hard to develop a responsive design and then what we've also seen is that uh, there are 16 different buttons which is not even a great user experience if you can't connect like a certain copy in a button and a color of a button to be a primary cda and then uh, a user will get confused and also our webflow style guide is gonna get so big and there's gonna be a lot of classes and that's what we've seen sometimes from other other projects that uh just the style guide as is is not a system it's just like random yeah values yeah. of font sizes which is of course something that you should include but it can definitely and should be more comprehensive especially when we get to a part of a grid system and margins and paddings and other okay things. and we're back we had a small camera problem i guess that's what happens when you record a podcast for the first time so hopefully that's not gonna occur uh, kind of anymore so the question where we left off is kind of where do other agencies that maybe don't have that much technical knowledge kind of make mistakes when connecting i guess the fonts and the style guide so maybe we can continue there on that front yeah well i don't want to repeat myself but then i'm just gonna have a quick overview what happens sometimes is that either we don't get a responsive design which is also completely <laughs> okay but if we have a system designed for mobile we would know what styles to use on mobile and <clears throat> sorry 
Other things are, for example, that um, Figma designs are not properly connected. We don't have uh, predefined paddings and margins and they're like all over the place. Um, and for example, if somewhere, someone was to at least like take a look at another style that guide and how it's set up, they would have a better idea what a style guide needs to include and for it to set up for it to be set up on that floor. Yeah, yeah. So kind of maybe what more items did we start to kind of applying to our design systems after working with bigger enterprise clients like uh, kind of like Upwork, whatever kind of because there are some bigger design system items that you cannot maybe steal on the level, whatever. What did we learn from that and start using uh, on other projects? Well, definitely a lot of things. I mean, um, for starters, you don't always expect to have some items that or you don't plan uh, or it doesn't come to your mind that you need a, a disabled checkbox, for example. And then um, sometimes all those websites have onboarding flows that are heavy with form fields and other stuff, which sometimes if you're just designing a landing page or a page or two, it doesn't come to your mind that a website needs like all of the different label sizes, uh, sizes of the labels, or some things that are more comprehensive, drop downs for countries and stuff like that, that don't usually appear on all of the websites. And then again, going back to a uh, system, it needs to be laid out so it can be handed off between different designers. And that's something that I learned most with working with uh, enterprise clients is that if there are seven designers, we want to be able to design a page that if someone from uh, another part of the world design, designs it and we haven't seen each other ever, but if we are working with the same design system, our pages come up and look uh, cohesive. They yeah. don't look like two different websites and that's probably the most important thing. Yeah, I feel like on our side in terms of development and technically also design is a great system as we haven't used it so like a lot before uh, in, in a sense in Webflow. I mean, having the exact same grid system in Webflow using grids. Yeah. Previously it was more kind of guessing how much kind of it is, but after working on those kind of bigger projects, we realized how important it is. And that's why in full starter, we have kind of those 12 grid systems yeah. and then scaling it down kind of depending on the client. And that's why we can also ensure that the kind of Webflow is as exact the same uh, item as in Figma when we follow that grid system. Yeah, that's exactly something that I always forget to mention, but I feel is the probably the most important thing. Like, unless you have a grid and it's scalable, like you shouldn't design or develop. Like that's that's something that's a basis of it, and probably that's why I always forget to mention it because I I. It's a, it's a given that it should exist, yeah. but sometimes, yeah, when I look back at our earlier work or my first website, I was like, agreed, what's agreed? And then how do I scale this? But once you, once you learn those principles, it gets much easier. Yeah. And it's also really good because Webflow is not as bootstrapped. Like on Webflow, we can create custom grids. So it can be a four grid, it can be a 12 grid, 16 grid, or just different gutters, merges and whatever. Yeah. And all of that is going to depend on per project basis. So I mean, after learning all of these items, kind of, do you feel like a designer should be a Webflow developer and a designer? Kind of, what's your stance on that, or just kind of playing around on Webflow in order to learn design a little bit better? Well, I, I have a really strong opinion on that one. Some may disagree, but I, uh, my opinion is, if you are a de designer, do design. If you are a developer, do development, because there is so so many things in both of those. And if you want to, for both of those to work pro properly, like to have a properly set up style guide, to have a really comprehensive design, to have everything looks, look perfect, then just do design. A good thing to do is go play around in Webflow, understand how things work, and then with all that knowledge, continue working on design. Make sure to hand the perfect file to developers and then let developers do the development because once again, there is so much more to development that we actually see. Uh, like there are animations, propose an animation, but it's a completely different approach to animating in Webflow. So 
to have like a project from start to finish be let's say perfect or close to perfect i think those two roles should definitely be di- divided to yeah. two people yeah and i feel like and I, there are people that do both and kind of i feel it's great that, that i mean kind of on my side i know that i do design and development also but i feel like i'm not uh, I haven't been designing kind of for let's say a year, mostly focused on Webflow. I feel like now on your side, I just start to know a lot more things that I maybe wouldn't think of. And then kind of if I get back to design, I probably the developers will be picking up a lot more and then uh, you lose on that front. So I feel like and I, it's super hard to kind of educate yourself on design exactly. and on Webflow, kind of, especially when working on bigger websites. There's a lot of JS involved, a lot of kind of custom items that you need to think about connections to like an air table or whatever, which probably some of the designers might not think is yeah. super fun on that front. Uh, or maybe you just lose a lot more time than needed, like two weeks to set up a simple interaction yeah, exactly. instead of a few hours. So I do feel like, on my side, I do also kind of feel that we have a strong opinion that we have this the design team and development team and that's how probably, I mean, that, that's for sure how our agency is going to be scaling in the future. We're probably going to uh, force our designers that everybody learns a little bit about a bit of that flow so that everybody understands that, but yeah. I mean, kudos to you and people who develop and design at the same time, but those two industries um, grow separately. I mean, obviously they grow together because they are so interchangeable, but also there are design trends that you need to uh, catch up with. And then there are so much uh, happening as updates so on Webflow, for example, that are like happening every week or two. Of course, a designer should educate on those, but they'll leave it to developers to up their game at developing. And for, for someone, I think it's maybe even humanly impossible to be the best of both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like that, that might also give you a pressure just because if you start working maybe as a freelancer and you want to design and develop websites in Webflow, but you feel like maybe at one point you're struggling, uh, feel free to choose. And are you going to be a just designer or a just developer? It might be that you're going to be both, but it doesn't re- 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 require you to do so. Kinda, there is enough space for designers and just for Webflow developers kind of migrating from Figma to Webflow. Uh, kind of many other agencies actually just do Figma to Webflow and thus say, okay, Webflow developers are developers and designers are designers. Uh, so yeah, so on that side, kinda, how do we maybe onboard new designers in our agency looking at everything we discussed here? Well, the first thing when a new designer comes, I'm just telling them like, Okay, first you need to understand, especially because for background, uh, it's hard to find a web designer that's all already so well thought about what web design is and how to approach it. So most of our new designers are from a graphic design background. So they need to kind of like, uh, it's a mindset change in terms of going from one to the other. And uh, what I usually tell them or try to like explain to them is first you need to understand how web works, how it's structured in the backend, at least a little bit. HTML, CSS, you don't have to go into JavaScript or anything. But then if you want to design a good website and have a design set up in Figma properly, then spend a day or two in Webflow. Think of a project for like a landing page for your pet or something. Just try have as many mistakes as possible but just try spending some time in that environment and then go back to designing it definitely improves your design skill and it's maybe the best tutorial ever for yourself like to learn uh how to actually properly do yeah it. and i feel like you might also kind of have a lot more respect for developers like especially if you design a really complicated section and then you start planning how to develop it in webflow you're going to understand and appreciate a lot more kind of what they are able to do in a day when you cannot do it in a week, maybe, or whatever. And then depending on the timeline of the project, you can also judge how, how extreme to go design wise, just exactly. so that kind of maybe you're going to realize that the project is also dependent on how design is kind of wild on your side when you do design. <laughs> exactly. Once you start thinking in div blocks, it gets, it, yeah, you get a lot easier. Like, <laughs> yeah. You, position you can position great. everything. And I mean, it's not that you get any constraints it's just that you like i always think of like you don't need to be constrained by anything you don't need to be constrained by html or css or anything you just learn how the system behind the design works and in my opinion it might even get you or give you more freedom yeah yeah that's 
That's, that, that's true. I mean, kind of when knowing how to design it, you can design almost everything and everything is possible, which we also saw that sometimes designers think, okay, that's not possible on Webflow. Let's search for a custom solution or whatever, but that's not the case. It's, it's more yeah. of just having the right base, the right style way to start with. And then with that same style that you can do really, really wild things on, on, that, on that front. So, I mean, kind of the next question was, what, you, what would you recommend to designers wanting to start uh, designing in Webflow? But I guess you already answered that with starting to play around in, in Webflow uh, kind of for every single design in the, in the beginning. Yeah, definitely. And the, the one important thing to mention that everything is like kind of scalable. So once you set up a base, it's something that can grow. It's not like set in stone forever. And that's sometimes what clients think or what designers starting to design think like, and that's something that maybe pushes them back in thinking like, oh, well, is this possible or how can we change this? Like, it's a growing thing. It's not like uh, it's set in stone. Like, you can't change it. Everything is like, if your brand grows, your website will grow with it. Your style guide's going to grow with it. And the whole design system is going to grow with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, uh, based on that, front, I, I guess, kinda, did we have kind of go over everything needed for the kind of Figma to Webflow, kind of design to Webflow, kind of, do we have, do you have anything else to add that comes to your mind on that front? Well, I, um, I think now uh, that we think about it, there's always space for improvements, like especially with updates going on on Webflow, like introducing membership. That's something that now I, as a designer, should take a look at. Yeah. To learn how it works and the th thing that helps me the most is probably being uh, in touch with developers on a daily basis. And then if I have a question of, can you show me how that works in Webflow so I know how to develop it uh, or design it in Figma and then have it uh, designed properly so they, when they, I hand it off to them, they don't come up with a zillion questions yeah. to me like, how should this state of this look? Yeah, yeah. I, and I feel like, and especially with memberships, it's not about just how it looks. Yeah. It's more risky in a sense if maybe developers don't have the chance to give feedback on the designs and we kind of design something that is not possible in Webflow and then present that to the client and then we have to push back to the client. So it's really important for designers to actually know what's the possibility, let's say with the membership beta or whatever, uh, and just kind of stay in those constraints, like not adding, signing with LinkedIn, yeah. which maybe if a client saws that feature, kind of they're gonna be, okay, we really want this and then we need to tell them, okay, that's not possible. So in terms of that, it's really important uh, for that and for e-commerce also kind of touch yeah, base exactly. that. Kind of because there are a zillion different states for e-commerce, which uh, you can forget if you don't know how Webflow works and kind of what our thank you messages needed to design, etc., etc. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, now that I think about it, it's like if you're a designer that designs a website that are built on Webflow, you don't uh, think that Figma is your design tool. You think Figma and Webflow are both your tools, but then Figma is for designing, and then Webflow is for learning yeah to, yeah yeah i would say yeah yeah that, that's correct i mean kind of uh you can learn a lot a, a lot there and just kind of find out uh, as you said all of the states and everything how that's going to be behaving on different breakpoints whatever yeah because i feel like also sometimes designers design something and then you develop it in webflow and realize that you need to have a breakpoint at 991 and the navigation cannot fit inside and then you work together with developers in figuring out the best design solution or how to avoid that with different breakpoints. Oh, the navigation. Yeah. <laughs> that's something that's like its own system. And I feel like uh, the most like important thing is the collaboration with, the, with, designs, uh, with designers and developers. But uh, then again, you should collaborate, obviously, on a daily basis with a developer, but then you need to like people need to understand that like uh, having a developer there with you is a big like uh, it's a very good chance to learn but then maybe if you are remote or for a week or two you need to make sure that they can go on and design without you and that's yeah. why the systems are set up in Figma. Yeah, 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 which kind of like working on bigger design systems, like kind of you can use components and whatever kind of to build out your pages if needed. So, I mean, I know Marco sometimes <laughs> does this for some of our clients that he designs a page and then you're like, okay, that's, that's good. So, yeah, uh, like when having that base, like you can continue building on and that's what Webflow is great of because the marketing team can pick that up and create new pages and kind of 
uh, open up a lot more possibilities when the base is set up properly. Exactly. That's why I'm so happy. Like sometimes, like we have all the components set up, and then he just pulls them into Webflow, and he's like, "Does this look good?" I'm like, "It looks good," because the first thing we did when starting was setting it up properly. Yeah. And then he doesn't have to like call me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah that's, that's always better for designers. Uh, but yeah, I feel like that's that's almost everything that there is to discuss. I mean, in terms of the design, kind of that's comes kind of on top of my head. I mean, kind of in general, as a no code agency, kind of we feel like that there should be a little bit of a larger push. That Webflow is not as easy as it seems. Like with like, it's gonna grow even more and more and more with memberships and everything like that. There's gonna be even a bigger learning curve. So it's probably the time to discuss. That you need to decide kind of which career path you're gonna take. And also, if you're a designer and start playing around with Webflow, you might decide that developing is a little bit more fun for you and just gonna go in that direction instead of focusing on designs. So yeah, I mean, kind of, uh, we would love to hear down in the comments, kind of, what do you think about kind of design to Webflow? Kind of, do you feel like people should be designers and Webflow developers, or kind of specialize in one of those two? Uh, and we'll be more than happy to answer those. Maybe create another one of these kind of videos as a recap of kind of uh, what we learned from those comments and kind of what are we gonna do in the future. So, anything else to say for the for the end? uh keep learning and yeah have fun while designing that's definitely something to mention <laughs> yeah i guess so so i'll see you in the next episode bye bye